I had my first sexual encounter with a woman. Okay. Um, when I was young at the babysitter. It was um, like a teenage girl that she kept after school and um, you know she would help her you know with the little ones after school. Oh my. So we spent a lot of time together, we went out together, um, but you know she knew that I was not about that lifestyle. Like when but we met was each she, other. Was yeah, she but she was. Okay. Mm -hmm. She was. Oh so she turned you out. At the very beginning was probably the hardest was because I was still very new within the lifestyle and Holy Spirit the entire time was talking to me. So I knew that I was making a, a bad decision or something that I knew better than. My mom was very emotional. She said her dreams were being shattered at, uh, as it relates to your life mm -hmm. and, and what she raised you to become, mm -hmm. a wife, a, a grandmother. This show is going to be one that you will never forget. When mama, kept, when mama maintained the same standard, it didn't allow me to be comfortable. When your own mama said, I can't do that, son. I ain't going with you on that. That is not how I raise you. That's that tough love that some of you don't want to give that you're going to have to start giving. Today on Living by Faith. No, you can tell it. <laughs> Don, watch this main man. And then my main man, Hubbard, there. Good to see you, Hubbard. That's my main man. Stand up, main man. He's, he's a good, this is my partner. I gave this cat, I gave, he's a partner of this ministry. I don't, I don't know him like that, but he had a dream in his heart. Come in, main man, you all buff. Why your chest sitting up like that? <laughs> This guy had this dream to expand his restaurant business. Can I tell our business? And God told me to give him three hundred thousand dollars. Jesus, uh, your own money. Mm -mm -mm. That had to be God. That had to be God. <laughs> that had to be God. Say so. Three hundred thousand dollars. And you gonna try to tell me I don't care for my partners? Turn to your neighbor and say, ooh, speak to him, Lord, about me. <laughs> I don't care what y'all say. I'm trying to get you paid. I receive. Amen. But you got dreams. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, come on, receive this. You got, come on, receive this. Get your hands up. You got dreams in your heart that I promise you, the people that I said God that, that God would bring to you to connect with you are going to be the ones that finance your dream. Yes. Yes. There are people looking for you right now. Yes. Same into that. Amen. Okay, don't get stupid in here. Don't get dumb on me. Don't, 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 don't become ignorant and dumb. All this church talk about is money. I ain't studying you. I am not thinking about you right now and what the enemy is trying to speak to you about. It's not about money. It's about your coming to the wealthy place that God has called you. And wealth has nothing to do with money. 
It includes money, but it has nothing to do primarily with money. It's a state of mind. And if I can get you wealthy in your soul. Oh, yeah, go and be seated, man, man. He, he got Gucci and Versace and... Is he single? Yeah, main man single too, y'all. <laughs> hey, you better set up a table in the foyer, boy. <laughs> they hollering at you in here. I'm so glad I'm not single, boy. I wouldn't want that. Woo, Jesus. As handsome as I am, yeah, woo, they would come for me. Uh, pass the mic. What are you talking about paying so I can go be seated? I said, I said, uh, sweetie, I need a financial report. You haven't given me a financial report in a while. Wow, what's, what's going on? When can we sit down? She said, oh, I'm going to need, uh, can we get together in about three months? I said, what have you done that you need three months? Pete, I was thinking, you... It's complicated. Some of you are not ready for opportunity because you could not finance it. And it's not because you haven't had the money. Your money doesn't have an assignment. You haven't assigned your money to anything. It has no vision, and that's why you can just see it go. Okay, let's just talk about the $3 per gallon that you've been saving at the gas pump. Where is it? Let's just talk about that. That's just a small illustration. And I'm not here to try to get anything from you. I'm trying to get everything to you. Okay, do the math. I got any math people in here? Get, get, what's what's, uh, what's uh, $60 a week for the rest of this year? So we got, about, we got about 50 weeks left. So do 60 times 50. $3,000 you could have in your bank account by the end of the year if you just track your gas money. And the reason why you're frustrated about a pastor talking about money, because you're not good stewards over it. And you don't have that three grand in the bank where it would make you feel like, I got some wiggle room, man, if, if I got $3,000 in the bank. How many of y'all would like to have an extra three grand in your bank account sitting there just looking at you? And I promise you, this is not money. I had another lesson. I don't know how I'm even over here talking about this. But God will customize every meeting for the hearer. Because this is your year. Sweet 16, this is your year. This year is going to be sweeter. And if he's a good musician, he would have gave me some backup music when I said, sweetie, he still missed the second cue. I mean, is he up there? Sweetie. Sweetie. Oh, see, he ain't he, he come from that kind of church. So he, he, he don't even know where to start. He's supposed to help me out. Dr. Didi was in the cash business years ago, and every day she would come home and empty her pockets, and she would maybe run off to the bathroom or whatever have you, and while she would run off to the bathroom, I would go take some of her money. Didn't say anything about taking her money, just went over to the book stand where we had our small bookcase and would take the money and put it in the book. I knew it was a safe place. (laughs) 
Y'all sharp today, boy. <laughs> I knew that money was safe because along that time, her trade exceeded her academia track. And so she wasn't really interested in that much reading back in the day. Now, she's so improved. I have a brilliant wife, yeah. a beautiful, brilliant wife <laughs> that I am just honored to be called her husband. I'm Dee Dee's husband. I'm Dee Dee's husband. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dee's husband. Okay, wait. Ow! Oh, Dee's husband. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Stop it, boy, stop it. I think every husband should feel that honor yes. to be the husband of your wife. Yeah. On your way home, say, baby, I'm, I'm your husband. I'm honored to be your husband. So about seven months into doing that, every week, it was getting close to Christmas. I said, baby, go, go on that bookshelf and grab that blue book. No, not that one, that, one, blue, that blue book. Grab, grab it and put it there. She pulled the book out. I said, open it up. Who am I? Open the book. She opened the book and all this cash falling out. She said, ah! ah! Who, whose money? I said, it's yours. It's mine. I said, yeah, I've been taking that for you, from you, every week for the last seven eight months. She said, are you kidding? Here's what she said. I never even missed it. I didn't know. It wasn't assigned to anything. You're going to miss money that's a sign. And you're disqualifying yourselves germane to the order of God because if you're not faithful in the least, you then become disqualified for the much. So if you're not managing min minimum wage, wages, there's no way you're going to manage maximum wage. And God is not interested in expanding your junkyard. Enlarge my territory. How big would that junkyard be? He's a loving God because he knows if he gave you, gives you too much beyond your character and integrity, it's going to ruin you. That's why your gifts and talents can take you into places that your character will not keep you. You remember my fever ship? My fever ship? My fever ship? The boy. Okay, Google. And then, and then that's your lesson for the day because I don't think I'm going to get into, ooh, I know I'm not. I'm already teaching, though. Yes. Yeah, right. Hey, hey. What was I talking about, baby? You need to tell them about what you said, shared on yesterday about saving because you didn't finish that. Why put that money to the side? Because years ago, you gave the same word about there saving is, and getting out of debt. There is something that I don't know what, I'm not an economist as such. I'm going to be talking about a seven mountain mantle that you're going to be hearing very soon. One of these mountains in our society is the economic mountain. You got the entertainment and education. We got to get on top of it. And God, I can't, oh, Jesus. Kenneth Copeland prophesied to me. I called ahead, Rhonda, 
And I told Brother Copeland's assistants that Dee Dee and I were coming. This guy waited for us out front. The minute we pulled up, he had ushers waiting. They pulled up, and we got in the back. And I promise you, I didn't have to walk, walk as long as this aisle to the church to get in. Can I just talk to you? I mean, I'm ministering. I, I may not so-called preach today, but, but I'm preaching. Amen. So I get in, and they bring me through the side entrance where I enter in at the front of the church. And I'm thinking, whoa, this is cool. You know, they waited for me. I mean, they're bringing me in. This brother Copeland, he's a general. Amen. And you better start respecting generals. The anointing you refuse to respect is the, re the anointing you accept. I mean, you, you accept to reject. You accept the rejection of that anointing if you don't respect it. Was that clear enough? Yes. Man, and like, like I came in through a side door here and here's a front row, and I'm thinking, all right, I mean, this is what, how I'm supposed to be treated. I'm, I'm, I'm a general. And then all of a sudden, he make a right turn and start going up the aisle. In my mind, in my mind, I'm saying, skirt, where, where we going? <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. He goes about, about, back about five or six rows and then does one of these usher moves. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting here? So I need, I need. <laughs> now, why I got to act everything out? <laughs> but y'all going along with me, you see me scooting through that aisle. <laughs> And I sat down, I leaned over on Dr. Didi. I said, baby, I got to humble myself. She said, what are you talking about? I said, I thought I was going to be on the front row. <laughs> she said, man, that's what you get. <laughs> what does he do for those who humble themselves? Oh. He exalts. What does he do for those who walk in pride? A base. One's a bound and one's a base. Choose ye this day. Right? I apologize for this, y'all. I wanted to finish my lesson. But I know this is Holy Spirit. I really did. And I just hope that you can be spiritually mature enough. Okay, I'll say that. If you were planning to become upset with me, Counsel those plans. Because it's going to mess up your track. It's going to mess up your death. And you'll know if the devil tried to speak to you about being upset with me, call him out. And then lo and behold, Brother Copeland, while he's teaching, he just stops teaching. You saw it. And takes off up the aisle to where I'm sitting and lay his hands upon me. And he's now ready to go, and he turns as though the Lord said, one more thing. Go to the top of your mountain. Now, you got to understand that I just declared 2016 to be the year. Oh, can I prophesy to you like he's prophesied to me? Go now to the top of your mountain. You belong there. Shout that, I belong there. I receive. Yeah, that's special seed. I receive this. I heard that by the Holy Ghost. So this economical mountain and it's going to be a humdinger, boy. It's going to be a huge one in the next two or three years. And I'm not certain how radical 
but I saw the bottom dropping out of this thing. Okay, here's my word to you. Get out of debt. Save and sow. Save and sow. Save and sow. Start now. Find out where your money is going and save and sow. I already told you where 60, at least $60 of it a week, $3,000 of your money that you, you don't even know of. Because we cannot be like this world. We got to show the world. I believe there's going to be a great revival. Because when people run into hardships, they run to the church. And the church got to be prepared. And if you scrambling and barely making it like them, how in the world are you going to offer them a piece of chicken? So what am I to do now, baby? <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, because your time is... I'm going to say this, then I'm going to split. I mean, I'm going to leave. <laughs> Third John 2 says, I wish or I pray above all things that you prosper and that you be in health even as your soul prosper. We've been talking about this soul simulator. Say this, the only, the only place, come on, talk back to me, come on in the balcony, the only place, the only place where limitation exists, where limitation exists. is in my soul. In my soul. Limitation does not, does not exist anywhere else for me, else for me. But, but, that's a big one, in my, soul. in my soul. Now, once I can get my soul free of any limitation, I can expand. Pastor and I was talking about Steph Carey. That boy, last night, took three steps beyond the half court line and launched the ball. Had enough time to literally work a play, but he launched it, I received. And, and, and I told Pastor, this is the first and last time I'm gonna give him credit for this. Next time you hear it, I'll be saying God told me. but I'm respectful enough in his presence to let you all know this is what he said. What you got to understand is Steph has expanded his place of shooting in his soul. That's good. That, oh, you, you, did, did you get that? You, 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 God, dog, I, I hope somebody would get that. Did, you saw that, didn't you? I can tell you saw that. On the court, where you feel more comfortable about shooting shots closer, Steph has expanded in his soul where he believes wherever I shoot on the court. <laughs> this is what, this is what he said. This is what he said. Hey, hey, Fiola, get a shot of Fiola. Is her name Fiola or Fiola or Fifi or Fiola, Fiola, Fiola. His wife was with Dr. Didi. This is what he said. And, Pastor, he catches the defense off guard because the enemy never expects for you to shoot that far out. Ah, Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're going to start pulling the trigger where the enemy will think I need to check him when he's closer, but you better check me anywhere I am. You better check me wherever I am. Hey, Baba, can't say that, Baba. I command you 
to expand in your soul. And even in your giving. In Jesus' name. Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. And this year, you're going to have to start right, watch this, stay right, and finish right, relative to your hearing me. And just because things are bad right now, doesn't mean that they're going to be bad forever. And the enemy doesn't want you to get a glimpse of another day, a day where you are thriving and uh, flourishing and having all your needs met. He doesn't want you to see that, but I got good news for you. He who has begun a good work in you, and all of it starts with your heart. Say, my heart. Don't be concerned how people will respond to you. You do what's in your heart. Dr. Mike teaches us that life is a series of decisions that you need to make, and if you make good decisions after another, you're going to live the good life. To order this six-disc CD or DVD set, call 1-888-630-4540. Again, that's 1-888-630-4540, or visit www.spiritoffaith.org. If you're ever in the Washington or Baltimore metropolitan areas, we invite you to worship with us at one of our Saturday evening or Sunday morning services. Please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. I had my first sexual encounter with a woman. Okay. Um, when I was young at the babysitter. It was um, like a teenage girl that she kept after school. And, um, you know, she would help her, you know, with the little ones after school. Oh, my. So we spent a lot of time together. We went out together. Um, but, you know, she knew that I was not about that lifestyle. Like, when but we met each she, other. Yeah, she but she was. Okay. Mm -hmm. She was. Oh, so she turned you out. At the very beginning was probably the hardest was because I was still very new within the lifestyle. And Holy Spirit the entire time was talking to me. So I knew that. I was making a, a bad decision or something that I knew better than. My mom was very emotional. She said her dreams were being shattered uh, uh, as it relates to your life mm -hmm. and, and what she raised you to become, mm -hmm. a wife, a, a grandmother. This show is going to be one that you will never forget.